Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a recommendation video of horror books that you probably haven't read and possibly haven't even heard of. This is a follow-up to a video I did on the same topic but for science fiction and people in the comments asked me to do a follow-up for horror. And so I have to admit I had to scour through my shelves to find books that I really don't think you've read and like I said possibly haven't even heard of online. And I like to do these videos because I do feel like a lot of times recommendation videos are just talking about really popular classics so you know recommending Stephen King and Joe Hill and other really big names and so I want to do a video highlighting some titles that don't get as much love online and hopefully change that hopefully put some more under hyped hidden gems on your own TBR all that being said let's get started first up we have the Phantom Circuit by Austin Farmer and this is a horror novel following a young woman whose sister has recently died she was a pop star and when she goes on to her sister's Facebook page she discovers that there is some kind of hacker that is trying to contact her and trying to start a game of Bloody Mary. Now, if you follow my channel for a while, you know that I love when horror crosses over with modern technology. So often horror books are afraid to incorporate it, but I really like books that reach in and really try to bring that new technology into these classic horror narratives and weave them into the trope. So I definitely liked a lot of pieces of this one. It wasn't an all-time favorite one that I've talked about a whole lot on my channel before, but definitely one I would encourage you to check out if you have not yet already. Next up we have Dracula Ascending by Sidney Wignett and this is a horror novel that is a mashup between Dracula and Frankenstein. This is a reinterpretation of those classic stories. Basically in this version there is a man named Victor Frankenstein who is being put on trial for a bunch of atrocities. You find out that he created a monster however in this version the monster that he creates is Dracula. I am a big fan of the Dracula classic story and I'm very familiar with Frankenstein although at this point I have not yet read the classic but I really enjoyed how this author brought these together it's part of a larger series where she really blends together different horror classics and kind of remixes them and this one was surprisingly very serious in tone I thought that it had that gothic feel and just avoided the trap of being very tropey which is so easy to do with these kind of retelling remash up stories but this one was very compelling I really found myself caring for the characters and I thought that the conversations around Dracula seeing himself as a monster were really well done and very nuanced. So I really did like this one. Again, one that I'd love to see more people check out. I talked about this uh, more recent than some of the other ones, but definitely, again, worth your time. Next up, we have Pretty Ugly by Jennifer Ann Gordon. And this is another horror novel that involves technology because we follow a few perspectives, including a woman who works as an influencer on Instagram. And so she's putting herself out there. This is a really great story that deals with themes of femininity and body image and just the challenge of having this online persona is something that myself as a booktuber who has put myself online on YouTube really related to. I really connected with a lot of the subject matter and I thought that that particular perspective was very strong and very compelling. So again, if you like very modern horror that deals with current social media accounts like Instagram, this one is really unique and really well done. And I also recommend Blood and Other Matters. This is a young adult horror book that follows a young teenage girl who finds herself on the doorstep of her best friend. She is covered in blood. She remembers going to a party with a bunch of football players, but she doesn't remember what happened and is just now on this doorstep trying to piece together the events of the night. And so the story follows her and her friend as they try to investigate. There is a bit of an obligatory young adult romance, which is not my favorite, but as a story, I found it to be very compelling. I want to know the secret behind the mystery. I want to know what was happening. And I'll be honest, I read this book so long ago that I stand by the fact that I do consider it to be a good book. I remember really enjoying it and finding it um, a very solid read, but I don't actually remember what happened there. So I do need to revisit this one myself to find out what actually happened on that dark, disturbing night. So definitely one I recommend, even if my memory is a little bit blurry on this one. Then we have Candy by Justin M. Woodward, and this is a horror thriller noir that follows a woman who works as a serial killer hunter. She hunts them down and, well, brings them to her kind of justice. This is one that's almost a bit satirical, and I really like the main character, Candy. She is just very tough with a very distinctive voice, and I remember just finding her to be a very compelling lead character. I love that she is fierce and feminine and does not apologize for anything. So if you like a story like that, this this one again is one I would love to see more people talking about and one that's definitely stuck with me over these years. 
Next up we have Ether Christ by Kirk Jones and this is a horror novella that is set in a small town where there is a string of murders and the town's broadcasting agency appears to be prophesizing who is going to die next. We follow a salesman who seems to always be at the center of the crime. He always seems to be there when the victim is found and believes that the town is somehow watching him and just recording what he is doing. And so this is a good story that blends together technology, it blends together horror and science fiction elements and it's very mysterious, it's very weird and it kind of has that like old-timey feel, you know, blending together again like newer technology but still older with the analog radio messaging and it's just really eerie. I think that it's very good for people that enjoy kind of those tropey older classic horror that just kind of again like plays with older technology and it has those nostalgic feels. I am all for all of those tropes so this one worked very well for me and definitely is one that I would love to see more people picking up today. Next up we have Korean Road by Brian Scott and this is a horror novella that follows a man who is returning home from military service with PTSD and in the story we follow him in his dark descent into depression and of course because this is a horror story there's the question of is it just the PTSD or is there something supernatural going on. This book I remember was really compelling when I read it. I thought the character work was great. It's a great depiction of PTSD and really hits home on an emotional level. Given the subject matter you can expect it's very dark and grim and really hit hard in terms of emotions. It definitely has a lot of impact there. And on top of that, as much as this book was very memorable, I have to say that the way it was delivered to me was even more memorable and sticks to me to this day. One day I was at work and I got a phone call on my cell from the local police. I live in Canada so yes it was the RCMP or the Royal Canadian Mounties and they said, hello is this Rachel? Are you the shades of orange? And I gotta say, for anyone out there who has put themselves online, having the police ask you about your online identity is absolutely terrifying. I have nothing to hide, but I try very hard to keep it private online just for my own protection. And so when I got that call, I nearly had a heart attack. Thank goodness the reason they were calling is because a package with a book inside had been delivered to them instead of the post office and they were just tracking me down to make sure that I would get it rather than having to return to sender. So I do think it's a funny story of how kind and considerate our police are here. We are very fortunate to um, have the service that we do but yeah that is definitely the most memorable delivery I've ever gotten of a book. All that being said let's move on to the next book. Next up we have Come Little Children by Dee Melhoff and this follows a woman who goes to work up north in a funeral home. She goes to work at a home that is run by a family and she becomes involved with one of the sons and they begin to have a bit of a romance. Something goes wrong. She realizes that this family has secrets when one day she opens the door at night to find that there is a child there with their body sewn and knows that something terrible is going on. I don't want to give away more of the plot but this is a great supernatural horror story with elements of body horror which you know I love. I loved how it dealt with with the treatment of bodies at death and all of those conversations around mortuary work and I just thought it was really fascinating as you can imagine and of course you have creepy children going on and all those good elements and tropes that I love so much. So again one that is just eerie, unsettling and definitely needs more love online. Then we have The Last One You Expect by Adam Caesar which is a horror novella that follows a young man who makes low budget horror films in his mom's basement. He has a very sexy co-star that he is working with and they agree to take their films to the next level by doing a Kickstarter but that Kickstarter requires them to sacrifice some real blood and the story gets really intense really fast. This is a story that I picked up by Adam Caesar after reading a few more of his more I guess tropey fun horror stories and so this book was quite a surprise because I hadn't seen this side of his writing and storytelling and I will say that this one is really intense, lots of content warning for uh, just all sorts of violence and it's it's gruesome and dark and disturbing in all the best ways. I had a lot of fun reading it. <laughs> Just again that kind of shows more the type of reader I am but definitely one I recommend. I think that most people are aware of his traditionally published book uh, Clown in a Cornfield but I definitely recommend you check out his backlist because he has some teeth and definitely his book, this one at least, certainly has some bite. 
Finally, we have Rites of Extinction by Matt Serafini, and this is another horror novella. This one follows an alcoholic private investigator who is going to a small town to investigate her daughter's murder, and when she gets there, the story goes in a different direction because things are not quite as they seem. I'm going to leave it there because it's definitely one you want to go in without getting spoiled, but oh my goodness, this one was unexpected. It was a big page turner, and I really loved it, and so if you're interested in more, you're going to have to check it out for yourself because that's all I'm going to say on that one. So as that is it for this video. I would love to hear of the books I talked about, how many have you read and how many have you heard of? I would love to hear what my score is in the comments down below. If you're new to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, fantasy, and I do try to read a combination of the buzzy bestsellers and new releases, as well as lots of backlist hidden gems like these. If you want to help me out, you can share this video around online, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, even if just a little stack of books or a little ghost. And if you want to hit that notification bell, you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.